Hello everybody and welcome to another Cardboard of the Rings deck spotlight. My name is Mark and I'm going to be covering a deck I've been having a lot of fun with these past few weeks and that is Mono Tactics Hirgon. The three heroes in the deck are Tactics Theoden, Tactics Eowyn, and of course Hirgon, a Gondor hero that was introduced to us in the Beneath the Sands adventure pack. Hirgon has a unique ability that reads, after Hirgon quests successfully, play a Tactics ally from your hand reducing its cost by one and you can reduce this cost to a minimum of 1. Then you may raise your threat by 1 to give that ally plus 1 attack and plus 1 defense until the end of the round. Hirgon's great because his ability covers a weakness in tactics that has always been about resource generation. He isn't necessarily gaining your resources, but what he does do is discount pretty much all of your tactics allies by 1. So what this does is, allies that, are con that were considered too expensive, they now have a skin in the game, and allies that were cheap to begin with are even cheaper and let you spend your resources elsewhere. Hirgon's second ability is also useful. For starters, it does increase your threat, but it only increases yours, not that of other players. Typically, this kind of ability might say doomed one on it. What this means, though, is that you can provide support in more multiplayer games without having to burden the other players. You don't have to show up with this doomed deck that is going to make everybody's eyes roll. So although this deck does center around Hirgon, the other probably equally important hero in the deck is Tactics Theoden. And Tactics Theoden is what makes this deck viable as both solo and multiplayer. If you don't know what Theoden does, his ability says that every hero with a printed Tactics icon gets plus one willpower. So combined, our three heroes, Eowyn, Theoden, and Hirgon, will be questing for 11 willpower on turn one. This of course is even better if you have other players at the table who have tactics heroes that they just throw into the quest for whatever reason, or maybe they have Thalin. So real quick, we're just going to cover a couple key interactions and combos. And of course, as a reminder, if you want to see the list, just click the link in the description below. So one of my favorites is the Marksman of Lorien, a three cost Sylvan ally that was introduced in the Drowned Ruins. She has three attack, two willpower, and when she comes into play, she reduces an enemy's defense by two. She was already a great ally in that she can reduce, you know, the threat of pretty much any enemy that the players get, but it was always enemies that were already out, and you might run the risk of an even beefier enemy coming out after questing. With Hirgon, you're able to play the Marksman when you want to, and you can even boost her to 4 attack, pretty much guaranteeing you can kill whatever enemy you choose to uh, have a lower defense. The Knight of Minas Tirith is also a great ally, particularly in this mono tactics list, since he is able to bring down a, an enemy from the staging area. Now this happens after questing successfully, so he won't reduce the threat, but he can pick off some of the smaller enemies and save other players from having to engage it. Another ally that I didn't expect to be my favorite, but in practice has been really showing its worth is the Longbeard Sentry. He's a three cost dwarf ally with one attack, two defense, three hit points. Now of course with Hirgani he's technically two cost and he has an action that has you discard the two cards on the top of your deck to give him sentinel and plus one. So on the turn he comes out, he can be defending as much as four for two tactics resources. What's great is that he gets sentinel when he needs it, and he can use this ability once per phase, meaning that if a player takes an immediate attack during questing or at the end of the round, you can use the sentry to save you or another player. Raymond of War is also a great card for this deck, as many of the allies in the list are able to have it attached to them. You can use it on the Longbeard Sentry, or the ally version of Boromir to create a stalwart defender, or you can throw it on Legolas, or one that I have a lot of fun with, uh, Zane Silverbeard, to create some pretty strong attacking machines. Now real quick, there is a sub-theme in this deck that's centered around eagles, and I just want to cover that real quick. There are three copies of Eagles of the Misty Mountains, and of course the smattering of other eagle cards. You know, the Vassal of the Wind Lord, Winged Guardian, Descendant of Throndor, so on and so forth. And then, you know, you have the three copies of the Eagles are coming to help you fetch them. If you can get Eagles of the Misty Mountains out by turn one, which of course, thanks to Hirgon is possible, then you can quickly have a pretty hilariously strong ally on your hands as your other Eagle allies come in and out of play, adding to his stat boosting ability. And pretty soon, I mean, you can have a Eagle that'll be defending for six, attacking for six, whatever works best. You can even throw support of the Eagles on another tactics hero, maybe not even one of your own, to let other people enjoy the uh, the boosted stats of your, of your big Eagle. Gameplay is pretty straightforward. So what you do wanna have though in your opening turn is a defensive ally or a defensive card. You can use something like Faint if need be, but really you wanna have an ally that's gonna stick around. So Defender of Ramas, the Longbeard Sentry, the Winged Guardian, you can even use the Eagles of the Misty Mountain. It'll probably be able to take a couple attacks before it gets going. And then after that, the ability of the allies is spread pretty wide, so you can play whatever you need per the situation. 
that's pretty much it. The deck's a blast to play. Like I said, it solves a lot of problems for tactics, but it does so in a way that creates some interesting gameplay choices and rewards you for making the right decision, but also making some deck building choices as well. Which is the other thing I want to say. What's really cool about Hiragon is that you can build him in a variety of ways. A lot of people have gone the Spirit Aon route to bring in some more readying abilities for Theoden or Aon. A lot of people have used Spirit Theoden to make some of the Rohan allies practically free when you combine them with Theoden and Hiragon. And you can even throw cards in like Grima. So you don't have to go the mono tactics route. You can really, really kind of customize it to the best of your ability. So I would recommend if you like the idea of Hiragon, check out the list, but more importantly, see what other lists are out there. And the last thing I want to mention is that there was an article that came out a few months ago by Joseph Forster, uh, B Gamer Joe, who has a blog called the LOTR Deck Testing Ground, and he had an article covering three different Mono Tactics Here Gone builds. So if you want to give that article a look, I will put that link into the description. So that's pretty much it. Let us know what you think. Let us know about your successes or not with Here Gone and what you think about him. And uh, thanks so much, guys. We will talk to you soon.